start by, we'll go ahead and start with our Pledge of Allegiance. If uh, um, Avi, do you have that available by any chance? All right, great. There goes, uh, there goes, Avi has our flag. And if we can go ahead and get started. We're gonna, oh, oh, somebody else had put also the Pledge of Allegiance. Avi, I don't know how to take you off. Of, I put you in the spotlight. I don't know how to take you off now. Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. So Brittany, I see that you are, I don't, I heard Jessica say that you're, you're an experienced Toastmasters. I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting you. So I don't think, I don't want to introduce you. Are you in as a guest or are you a member of our club? I am here as a guest. I attended a Toastmasters club uh, in Katy before the pandemic and I have yet to sign up for a new club and so I just did some research on the Toastmasters website and I found you guys and um, what brought me to this club is that I noticed that it was kind of project management based is what I saw and so I'm a project manager in my current role and wanted to you know connect network learn um, and hear some you know get some feedback and, and advice from other project managers who may be able to kind of help me evolve in my presentations you know and in my role. Well, thank you. We're glad. We're happy to have you here. Uh, it is. Uh, we welcome you. You are here. You are definitely able to be a guest as many times as you'd like. And we hope that you. This is a, a great experience for you. So one of the one of the inter, one of the topics that I'd like to discuss is that we uh, we are having our you know bring up the speech contest. We have two contestants that have um have who have indicated that they will be participating and that's Ms. Soma and that is Mr. Tosin. So if there are any other participants that, um, Brittany, if you'd like to jump in on that, you're able to also participate in that um, if you'd like. And um, Rohini as well, uh, those, um, those, those options are available and we will, we will go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, thank you, Brittany, for sharing. And today I have a dual role. Not only am I your, your club president, but I am also the Toastmasters for today. So um, I'll turn it over to Ms. Toastmasters. Hello everyone, thank you for being here today. I am your Toastmasters and it's a pleasure to have a dual role. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to, to hearing everybody's speeches today, learn and, you know, give, you know, give any, any suggestions. So our meeting for our meeting theme for today is win or learn. And our grammarian will, will just, will go ahead and introduce our word of the day in a little bit. But as, as we move forward in our day and as the new year, we've started a new year, every opportunity that we have is an opportunity to either win or learn. There isn't any situation out there that, you know, we fell. You, you take that opportunity, you celebrate your small, your wins, no matter how, how small or how big they are. But then if any, any type of, any kind of obstacle that we, we face, we have an opportunity to, to learn from those obstacles. So never take it as a failure. It's always a win or a, a learning opportunity. So let's, you know, let's keep that in the back of our minds. Let's keep that not only in the back of our mind, actually in the front for, front of our minds, that that is always um, a possibility in every opportunity that we face, especially when it comes to, when it comes to public speaking or speaking in, in front of leadership, speaking to, to, you know, coworkers and, you know, introducing yourself, getting out there and um, stepping up stepping out and, and, and be, you know, taking those small risks. So again, I want to uh, thank you. Thank everybody for being here. We have a win-win for today. We have all, we, all of our roles are, are filled. The majority of them were filled before the meeting started. So that's a, a big win for us. That's always, it's always, 
a pleasure to be able to see that. And thank you everybody who's gonna be participating in, in having the role. I really appreciate that. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and um, and today's, for, uh, during today's meeting, I have a team that is going to be assisting me today. And that team starts with uh, my general evaluator, uh, Ms. And our general evaluator for today is Ms. Jessica Sun. Jessica, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Toastmaster, fellow, uh, fellow Toastmaster, guest, and um, uh, Happy New Year, and the general evaluator of the today. Uh, and my role as a general evaluator is to introduce my evaluation team. I have a full team. Uh, who is very competent and they will do a uh, good evaluation uh, on grammar, timing, and also uh, counter and uh, speech evaluation and many more. And uh, at the end, uh, I will give a general evaluation of the meeting. E evaluation is a very important part for the Toastmaster program because by giving and receiving feedback, then you can improve your speaking and leadership skills. So a good evaluation should be helpful, encouraging and motivating. So before we go too far, let me introduce my evaluation team. And my first member of the team is the grammarian. And my grammarian today is Mr. Jacob. Jacob. It's all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests, as grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers, listening carefully to their language usage. I'll take note of any improper language, as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. As grammarian, it is also my, my duty to introduce to you the word of today, the word of the day. The word of the day is convey. The definition of convey is to make an idea, impression, or feeling known or understood to somebody. An example of, example of this word used in a sentence is the real virtues and diversity of America had never been conveyed in the movies. Each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. I will give the grammarian report when called upon during the meeting and also report on the usage of the word of the day. Thank you very much, and back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gormarian. And our next important role is the R counter. And uh, today, our R counter is our lovely Rafia Sati. Rafia, please introduce your role. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam General Evaluator. I'm Rafia Safi, and today I'll be playing two roles. The first role I will be talking about is the R counter. So during the meeting, I will be noticing the, the crutch words. I'll be noticing the, uh, the, uh, the filler words or repeated words used and pause filler. So all these things I'll be noticing. And towards the end of the meeting, I'll be giving you the detailed report. So that is the role of the R counter. The second role is as a timer. So uh, during the meeting, I will be noticing and I'll be monitoring the time of each speaker, evaluator, and the table topic speakers. And what I will do like for tip for evaluators, let's talk to the speakers first, about the speakers first. Well, today's speakers are going to be doing the five to seven minutes speech. And on five minutes, I will be playing, I'll be changing my screen background onto green. And then on six minutes, I'll be doing yellow. And on seven minutes, I'll be doing red. And then the speaker will have 30 seconds to wrap up. The same thing I'll be doing with the evaluators. The evaluation is going to be from two to three minutes. On two minutes, I will be uh, changing my screen towards green. And then I will be on two minutes and 30 seconds, it will change into yellow and three minutes, it will be red. And then you will have again a couple of seconds to wrap up. And let's go, go to table topic speakers and the table topic speakers will be speaking for one to two minutes. On one minute, I'll be displaying the green light, uh, green uh, background. And one minute and 30 seconds, I'll be displaying the yellow background. 
and on two minutes, I'll be doing the rant. And then again, the speaker will have a couple of seconds to wrap up. And towards the end, and I will give you the detailed report about the timings. Thank you so much. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Madam Timer and also the uh, counter. Thank you for taking the dual role. All right, so our next role will be our ballot counter. And uh, today our ballot counter is also our president and for, of the day and also uh, the Madam Toastmaster. So M Madam Toastmaster, do you, or ballot counter, do you want to introduce your role? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Evaluator. So for today as a ballot counter, I will collect the ballots and push, uh, kind of give that information after all the speeches and evaluations have been delivered and I'll tally up the results and uh, for the club. So once, once, each, once we finish each section of our meeting or our each section of, of our agenda, we'll go ahead and I'll have you through the chat, you'll send it to, to the Toastmaster through the chat and send it directly just to me. And I'll, I'll go ahead and tally those up. And now that, um, I'll, and that's gonna be my role for as ballot counter, I'll, I'll count those. So back to you, Ms. Um, General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking three rows today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go back to um, Madam Toastmaster. And I guess we can start our uh, prepared speech. Thank you. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Madam Evaluate, General Evaluator. So one, I want to go ahead and uh, uh, reverse a little bit. Uh, yeah, reverse a little bit and go back to really introducing and especially for our new member and um, I mean, our guest who's here, our guests that are here, Ms. Rohini and Ms. Brittany, and just really um, go back. And the way that we, we set up our meeting is that we have three sections. The first section is our prepared speeches. And for tonight, we have two prepared speeches. And then our next section is our impromptu speaking, which consists of table topics. During our table topics, people get to participate in impromptu speaking and get an opportunity to practice practice speaking, you know, kind of rapid questions, just thinking on your feet. And that's certainly great practice for anybody who, um, especially for, I know for me, it's always great when I get to practice impromptu speaking because I'm such an analytical person that I have to, it's like, I think I have to think about the whole story. It's like, well, you know, what, what do I want to say? It's like, give me time to write out, um, <laughs> write something out, but um, the, the impromptu speeches have certainly helped me out. And then our third part portion of our meeting is our evaluations. Uh, and that's our evaluation speeches where our Toastmasters members, you know, we critique each other and we give each other feedback. So the, that is the pie, the prepared speeches, impromptu speeches, and evaluation of how our meeting is set up. So without further ado, I will go ahead and introduce our first speaker. Tonight, our first speaker is Mr. Jacob Newlish. Sorry, Jacob. Uh, no, no, you're fine. Jacob Newlish. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for that. <laughs> okay. Jacob is one of our newest members. We are glad to have him aboard. He is going to be uh, he his pathway for tonight is or his pathway that he's chosen is dynamic leadership. Jacob is a young engineer who is progressing his way through the project management role. Um, his time spent with Toastmasters has given him the, a, a chance to better his communication skills in and out of work. So without further ado, I will go ahead and turn the floor is yours, Jacob, to discuss from vocal variety to body language. Thank you, Jacob. All right, if you wouldn't mind, can I do a share screen with you? I do have slides. Participation, here is the agenda. I could, if, if yeah, if share screen doesn't work, I can honestly just present without it. Okay, I think I need help with uh, giving him access to do that. And just, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Can you make him a presenter, like a name by him by his name? 
by his name. Okay. Yeah. It says mute, stop video chat, pin spotlight, allowed to record. No. The three dots. Yeah. Um, the where you show you show your video at the bottom. There's a little arrow, and it will give you an option to go to uh, Zoom settings. And there's a button for share screen. And what you would want to make sure is that it allows um, other participants to share. Enable the remote control. Of, okay. And so that on the left column, there'll be quite a few options there. And then you'll just um, give him the option to share. There you go. Let me try that one more time. You said video settings, share, share screen. Yes. Share options. Um, Madam, Madam Toastmaster, yes. if you go to the share screen below, below the page, just share screen. It will give you two options. Okay. Click share screen with every participant, or whatever that second option says. Okay, multiple participants can share exactly. simultaneously. Yeah, just okay. Make that. Okay. So, Go ahead and... so it should be good now. Okay. Yes. Let me know. Yes. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank you, everyone. Let me expand this and Without further further ado, let me get started. All right, fellow Toastmasters, I just want to take this second to thank all of y'all for taking us time out of y'all's day to take part in my presentation. Uh, my presentation will be over vocal variety, body language, and how you are affected. All right. So when we give a speech, presentation, or lecture, we are essentially giving our understanding of something. We are taking thoughts, ideas, and action, and we are turning those in turning those into words, phrases, and emotions. Oh, sorry, and emotions to inform or persuade others that, of things that we have learned or how we would like them to see a particular situation. The effectiveness of our delivery has a great impact on how successful our speech is. Using a range of vocal variety and different body language we are able to convey our message and stimulate the audience so that they can see the difference in what we are trying to compare or what we are trying to present. It is also important for us to use these different vocal variety and body language so that we can excite our audience and so that they are willing and eager to hear our speech. All right, now some people may ask, what's body language and what is vocal variety? Well, when you think of vocal variety, I want you to think of pitch, tone, pace, and volume. The pitch is the high or the low in somebody's voice. The tone is the emotional aspect behind the sound of it, and pace is the speed at which you're talking. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. You have to pick a pace that works best for what you're presenting and how well your audience is able to pick, on, pick up with what you're presenting. Volume can be thought of a thought of as how loud your presentation is. Sometimes we need to project our voice very loudly and sometimes a whisper works just fine. Another thing that works to contribute to our vocal variety is silence. Sometimes not saying anything at all is exactly what works. Sometimes we need to use our pace in a fast pace or sometimes we'll use it slowly. And what that does is it creates a great dynamic in our speech. Now, how about body language? Think of the stance and the movement of your presenter. Those are important tools that can be used to add diversity and type of variety to your speech. The use of a speaker's body, hands, and facial expressions are a great way to connect with your audience. Vocal variety. 
Vocal variety is not one particular characteristic of someone's voice, rather a combination of traits intermingled to gain the audience's attention. Varying one's pitch can be a great way to display unrest in a story. Maybe there's a conflict going on. Maybe there's a fight between two individuals. Varying your pace, raising your voice is a great way to stimulate and bring about that chaos that is going on in your presentation that you want your audience to experience. Increasing the pace of one's voice can imply a sense of urgency. Maybe someone has been injured and they need to very quickly display that sense of emergency that is going on. Tone is how you give words emotion. Are you sad because you just lost your dog and it's very painful? Or are you happy that you just found the dog and it's reuniting? Volume is a great way to add emphasis to a word or even a phrase. Now, let's think about it. Body language is essentially the nonverbal expression of one's emotions, feelings, and ideas. The key components of body language include one's stance and their movement. Think of the presenter's movement and stance as a tool to show progression of the speech. Movement adds to the excitement and to the variety. Is there chaos going on? The presenter is just going all around the stage without any particular pattern, or are they using their stance and their movement to show progression mm -hmm. in the speech? As we see, the presenter may stand further back and gradually approach the audience to show the audience the progression and the audience's understanding of what is going on. Gestures such as hand movement and facial expressions, whether it be a smile or a frown, are a great way to add a powerful impact to the speech and to affect the audience. Presenters can use their hands to show movement or transition from one phase to the next. Facial expressions can be used to convey the emotions the presenter is going through. As mentioned earlier, are you happy that you were reunited with your dog or are you sad that you lost the dog? Uh, care must be taken to understand how the audience will perceive the situation and whether their emotions will align with the presenter. Always keep in mind that some may feel joy where others feel pain. So it's always important to understand the cultural uh, aspect of things and how people will be how people will perceive what is being said. Growth in one's career. So me personally, I'm a young engineer. Uh, I am a new to the project management field and the way that I use these different vocal varieties and body language in my day-to-day -day life is when I come in contact with the young EITs or engineers in training. These are young individuals as I once was myself that are learning to become an engineer, to become a project manager, to learn what it is that it takes to be an engineer in the transportation field. What is very important for me is I must convey a lesson, I must convey a task to these young EITs that is clear and is understood by them. If I were to use the incorrect tone or maybe incorrect gestures, they may get confused. I must use a very steady pace in my conversation so that it keeps them calm, keeps them relaxed, and doesn't provide too much stress to these individuals. Now, when these individuals learn and learn effectively, that gives me the next chance and the opportunity to progress in my own career. It gives me more individuals that I can rely on, and therefore it gives me the opportunity to take on larger tasks. All righty, what about the technical side? If you don't wanna go down the project management side, how can body language and vocal variety be used in the technical side? As we all know, engineers, we're engineers, we are forced to think of some very technical things. How does it work? How do I take such a technical thing and present it to somebody in a way that they'll understand? Whenever you use varying vocal variety in different body languages, you're taking a complex situation and you're slowing it down so that the presenter can better understand it. So think of a lower, softer term, tone with an easier pace that allows your audience to better understand what it is that you're going through. That softer tone gives them more comfort and secureness whenever they're listening so that they feel that, hey, maybe if I have a question, I can ask this individual. Um, with a slower pace, like I said, it gives them an opportunity to really think about what it is that you're saying. So using different vocal variety and body language in the technical side is a great way to explain what it is that you need others to do. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I greatly appreciate your time, and that is the completion of my speech. Madam General Evaluator, back to you.
All right, thank you, Jacob. Thank you for that. We, are, we thank you for participating. Um, Miss Miss Timer, can we get one minute? And everyone, please do in the chat if you'll send your your comment your comments to directly to Jacob. Okay, I'm going to start it. Thank you. One minute over. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Madam Ballot Counter. I'm sorry, Madam Timer. All right, we are going to go ahead and continue forward and with our prepared speeches. And for tonight, we have our second speaker. And our second speaker is also on the pathway of dynamic leadership. Um, he, uh, Elias, Elias, does, does boss, is yes. is okay thank you um he will be giving a speech today in regards to the general idea regarding flooding in the houston in the greater houston area and he will be able to show us how to obtain public information that can be used to to avoid floods so i really look forward to that so without further ado um elias i'll pass it on over to you thank you madam toastmaster and I also need to share my screen and let me try. Okay, you and should please, be able to, you should be able to share. Or okay, you should, yes. Please please let me know if you can see it. Yes, I can see it. Okay. Or I can see it. Great. Like this. Good evening everyone. And today I want to talk about floodplain management. We all know the greater Houston area is like a sponge in Texas. I believe this topic is very important for all of us. If you haven't faced a storm in Houston, consider yourself a lucky one. Just picture this, uh, waking up in a beautiful day, feeling good and making yourself a fresh cup of coffee and spinning it while watching the rain from your patio. You smell the beauty of the earth after the rain. A couple hours later, you check outside and realize it's pouring even harder. You might think it's okay, crops need water, but then you go back inside and see water seeping in from your door. It's not a good feeling, right? You have to do something, something really quick to stop the water seeping in your house, but it is too late. Whatever it needs to be done, it needs to be done before flooding. Uh, flooding is real and happens way often, especially in Houston. If we aren't cautious, educated about storms and take the right steps to protect ourselves and our families, we could be in big trouble. Let's go next page. Let's look at this map. In this map, we can see Texas and also flood prone areas in Texas. As we all can see, the dark blue representing the high flood prone areas and Harris County and most of the greater Houston area within dark blue color. Since 19, like between 1988 and 2012, over 400 people have died in flood-related incidents, and over 4 billion in damage has occurred. About 12% of the state's land area is mapped floodplain, 
and it is even higher in Houston area. If you see, uh, there is a table right corner of the slide that shows the floods of storm events hit Texas. I have already experienced three of these storm events. In 2015, I experienced Memorial Day flood and Tax Day flood in 2016 and uh, the Harvey in 2017, which was the worst one. Let's go next page. Looking for floodplain information. So what can we do to protect ourselves from flooding? The safest place during a storm event is somewhere you need to stay at somewhere has high ground elevation. Let's check how safe our homes are during a flood. Let me show you how to figure out if you live in a flood prone area or not. So I'm going to open Google and I'm going to show how everyone can find the information we are looking for. So you need to type FEMA map service center. And then you need to click the first link on the website. And then you need to type your address here. After you type it, I type my And then it take you to another page. And that's kind of show where your uh, interested location located. And then after that, click on go to the NFHL viewer. So basically, whenever you click that, this is going to take you to a dynamic map, which shows a flat plane in different colors. And each color uh, represent different flood storm event, 100 year and 500 year storm events. And it's kind of telling us how likely they are to occur in any given year. On this map also, there are cross sections with numbers representing water surface elevation in 100 year storm event. And for instance, 100 year storm is supposed to happen once every 100 year based on the statistics, but it might hit earlier. We have had uh, three major storms between 2015 and 2017, and these storms should occur over a 100, uh, 300 year uh, period. Yes, you heard it right. Just three storms in two to three years that should have happened over 300 years but it happened in a couple years. If your home falls within zone AE, which is 100 year floodplain, there is a 26% chance of flooding in a 30 year mortgage period, which is very high. In the 500 year floodplain, your risk drops to 600, uh, 6%, but still very high. And what is your flood risk? And you can go to this, I just show you, and, and Tom is plain or not. Buy the house to have this information already because the previous homeowner has to close it. You should compare the water source elevation with the survey to finish floor elevation that you will receive when you purchase a house. And this finish floor elevation is the first floor indoor, uh, first floor indoor space elevation. And then the water service elevation can be obtained by the website I just show you. That is very useful website. And then make sure your finish floor elevation is higher. And get educated yourself and then uh, be careful uh, the elevation you are looking for. And if you don't do it, just get your sealing tubes ready. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jacob, for your speech on on flood floodplain management. M Madam Timer, if you'll give us a minute so we can give 
give Elias uh, feedback through the chat. Okay, one minute to start it. Thank you. One minute over. Thank you, Madam Timer. So everyone, now that we have finished listening to our prepared speeches, we had two great speeches. The first one, again, by our Toastmaster Jacob and our second speech by our second Toastmaster Elias. And we now are going to Uh, I'm going to ask our 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 timer if we can get a a briefing on on the speeches to confirm who to confirm that everybody qualified. Yeah, voting. Madam Toastmaster, yeah, both the spe speakers qualify. Thank you, Madam Timer, and if everyone can take a moment to to vote for their favorite speaker, speaker number one or speaker number two, and send those over to me. I can go ahead and get the um, started on the ballot counting for that. So we are going ahead and move on to the second portion of our meeting. Our second portion is our impromptu speaking and today, to assist with impromptu speaking is going to be Table Topics Master, Mr. Avi Chattery. Avi? Avi, I can't, we can't hear you, or I can't hear you. Love it, though. I have too many microphones going on, so thank you. All right, let me restart again. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm very excited that uh, I am going to be your table topic master for this evening. As our Toastmaster mentioned earlier, that we would be having a theme that is win or none. A little bit background on this. 90% of the people, we agree that anytime when you're out on a contest or going for a challenge, there are two outcomes. Either you win or you lose. 10% who actually prepares to win, they take it differently. Either you win or you learn. So tonight, our questions, our approach to this table topics would be very simple. I have only five questions and really simple five questions. I'm gonna call upon folks and then I'll put the question in front of you. Just go ahead, what's in your mind? Again, we are here to become the 10%, so nothing to lose, we are gonna learn. Okay, to start with, I am going to call upon our guest. We have two guests tonight. We have Brittany and we have Rohini. Let's start alphabetically. Brittany, you wanna go first? Awesome. Okay. Most of our time, we learn things. But given an opportunity, we get to teach. Now, if you get an opportunity, what are the biggest life lessons that you will teach someone? Yeah. 
biggest life lesson that I would teach someone? I would say that the biggest life lesson I would teach someone is that what happens to you in life, I would say that uh, 10% is actually what actually happened, right? And overall, the 90% is actually how you respond to that. So any bad scenario, bad situation can always be perceived and focused on in the negative aspect. But if you flip that and focus on the 90% and all the positives that can come out of it, taking it back to, you know, you either win or you learn, then there's an opportunity for you to turn whatever that could be perceived as a negative into a positive. So that would be it. Anything else you want to add? Because minimum 60 seconds. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I would probably say personally, that is something I've experienced in my profession, um, in my, I can't hear that, that's my phone ringing, that I would say that I've learned that and experienced that both in my profession and in my personal life, that I have reacted to things probably focused in more on that 10% as opposed to probably that 90% that can be focused on the positive things. Um, and then it, again, it's just what you make it. So if you decide to focus in on the negative, then it will be negative. If you decide to focus in on the positive, then it will be positive because you create what you think about. You create your perspective. So hopefully that was 60 seconds. Thank you. You were about to miss the most important part of your speech, the practical part, and thank you for sharing it. Okay, moving on. Rohini, now it's your turn. 2023, looking back, we always have some wins, some learning things, right? So what was your one big win and one big lesson that you learned last year? Last year, 2023, were was uh, uh, like ups and downs for me personally and emotionally and everything. Um, yeah, I would say uh, like in 2023, I took the biggest decision of uh, attending the six months of boot camp, data visualization and analytics boot camp, and having two kids and going through that intensive boot camp was really the biggest challenge for me but still I managed to complete it with good grade. So I'm very proud of it in this 2023. Uh, what was the next question? What was the another question? One big win and one lesson learned. One lesson learned was uh, to relax and to trust the process because I, I am the person who is really impatient and who needs results fast. So um, in this case, in this boot camp, I learned that you know I need to have patience and I need to just relax a little bit, not be anxious, anxious all the time and work towards your goal patiently and with confidence that I learned. 2023. Thank you. Very well Thank done you. for sharing that. Okay, now it's turn for the members here. Who's gonna go next? Three seconds. If no one's raising their hand, I'm gonna pick the name. One, two, three. Okay, this question would be for Mr. Akin. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay. I think you are the right person to answer this. How? Oh, let me start. What is your process to overcome a failure? Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. The question, what is my process for overcoming a failure? Good question. The interesting thing for me is Failure is actually something that is not in my dictionary because I have never failed. I have not achieved success in certain areas, so I have learned lessons. And here is how I'm going to answer that question. What are my actions when I realized I have learned a major lesson, which some people will call failure, and I recognize that. 
Number one, I will assess that particular case. What did I do? How did I start? What happened midway? What happened at the end that led to that learning? Number two, if wishes were horses, and I knew exactly what success meant, what, what was that success? And then I will place the two side by side, understand the gap. So that next time, if I find myself in that situation, my emphasis is not going to be on winning, but on learning. Learning repeatedly. That would be my key thing. We may call it success. We may call it uh, a lack of failure. But at the end of the day, I want to learn. If people around me say I have won, that's fine. If they say I've won, that's fine. But for me, it's all about learning. What am I learning? If I realize that I have failed, as some people will say, which I say I have learned a bigger lesson, what really did I learn? And what do I do next time different so that I do not find myself in the same situation if the scenarios were similar? That's what I typically do. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor Topic Master. I'm back to you. Thank you, Mr. Rakeen. As I said, the perfect person to answer this question. We all learned a lot today from you, Rakeen. Thanks a lot. Okay, moving on. Jessica, ready? <clears throat> all right. Simple question. How do you celebrate win or victory? Okay, my question is, how do I celebrate victory? That's an interesting question. Um, at work, we have project uh, complete in time, within budget. Uh, we have a happy customer. And then we have new business coming in from the same customer. I guess that's a big win for a project manager and also for the company. And uh, how to celebrate it. Um, of course, we uh, like to do project events together to celebrate. Sometimes uh, one of the project I attend actually has is a very large project and the project manager has a lot of money. So he decided to take everybody to Top Golf, include the guest and all the people that help out with the project. And that's a really good social event that um, first of all, we all happy that we are there and uh, uh, be part of that uh, successful team. And secondly, we can associate uh, uh, social with everybody, including clients and sometimes uh, teams that we don't work day-to-day -day basis. And we understand they are really part of the team and part of the success. That's a really good event. And uh, also we another thing we celebrate is by putting together the lesson learned and then we can do better next time. Thank you, back to you. Mr. Table Topic Master. Thank you so much, Jessica. Very well done. Okay, last question. Who's going to go for it? Are you pointing something on me or you want to go for it? <laughs> I'll go for it. That's one of my, I want to, you know, continue to win and master my impromptu speeches. So this is going to be a great opportunity. Okay. All right. So last question is a very... A tricky one, I would say. Ooh. One million dollars or erase all past mistakes. Which one would you choose? Thank you, Table Topics Master. In regards to one million dollars or erasing past mistakes, I would choose the one million dollars. I mean, the past mistakes, they're the past mistakes. You know, we're in the here, we're in the now, and we're in the future. So I would take that money and I would I would do three things with that. I would be, I would give, 
be generous. I would spend it and I would save it. I would save some, most likely for, because I'm a planner, I would save for retirement. I would spend it on just having fun. I would, um, and then I would also want to be generous and give some to, to people, to different people, which knowing myself, certain criteria that they'd have to meet in order, you know, in order for me to be generous to, to them. But I would definitely take the $1 million instead of erasing my past. Um, the past is what makes us, it's what puts us where we're at. So, you know, those are opportunities to, to an opportunity to win and learn. And life is about learning. And we always have that opportunity to, to win. So with that being said, Thank you. I would take my $1 million back to you, Mr. Toast, table, table master, tabletop, table master, my table Thank topics you. master. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Acting President today and participant. All right. That was five questions. Hope everybody had something to learn, a little bit of fun. Now I'm going to ask our Madam Timer, did every speaker qualify? Yes, Mr. Table Topic Master, all the speakers qualify. Thank you so much. All right, for voting purposes, first speaker was Brittany, then Rohini. Our third speaker was Akin, fourth, Jessica, and fifth, Melissa. Please go ahead and send your vote to Madam Ballot Counter. With that, I am going to transfer control back to our Toastmaster, Madam Acting President, back to you. Thank you everybody for who participated in our impromptu speeches. Um, just certainly an opportunity for us to win or learn. I definitely enjoyed um, having the opportunity to, to overcome some of the, the little impromptu speaking and thinking on my feet opportunity there. So now moving forward, I know you're gonna be, I'm gonna be getting um, I'm going to be getting the ballots from everybody for their favorite for for their favorite table topics person. And while that is happening, I would I will um hand it over to my general evaluator who is going to introduce our speech evaluators, Madam General Evaluator. Okay, thank you. Um, so like. Our table topic master says earlier, um, we are going to our third pie of our um, Toastmaster meeting, the evaluation, and that's very important for both our evaluator and speakers. And they will do evaluation on what they do good, what they do, uh, they can make some improvement and all those stuff. So uh, here you go, this is our um, piece of pie of evaluation. And uh, our first speaker uh, evaluation, speech evaluation will be um, Miss Brittany Robinson. Uh, and she is evaluating Jacob's speech from vocal variety to body language. Please help me welcome Brittany. And the floor is yours, Brittany. Wonderful. Thank you, General Evaluator. I will be evaluating the speech, as she mentioned, for Jacob today. And I would first like to start by saying overall, Jacob, I think you did a phenomenal job with your speech. It was definitely helpful for me. So while I was trying to take notes, I was also trying to learn. Um, the things that I believe that you excelled at was using the content of your speech within it to drive your points across. So that was as you, you know, made points about choosing your volume, speaking louder, speaking lower. You did that very well within the speech. You also used relatable examples to make the content relate to your audience. So I thought that that was very helpful in order to drive your points across as well. Things that I think you could work on would be continuously working on the pacing throughout the speech. Um, it is kind of hard to do that on, on Zoom, I think sometimes. And then to challenge yourself, I noted um, being attentive to the audience to ensure that you're conveying clear messages. So kind of looking for those head nods to ensure that people are receiving what you're what you're conveying across. Should I go over each of the uh, um, evaluation sections? Okay, 
For clarity, I gave a uh, four, so that spoken language is clear and easily understood. Vocal variety uses tone, speed, and volumes as tools. I gave a four. Eye contact effectively uses eye contact to engage audience. I gave a four. It's kind of hard to see on Zoom, but it appeared to be uh, you appeared to be looking at us and not from the screen. Gestures uses physical gestures effectively. I gave a four. Audience awareness, I gave a three, um, kind of alluding back to something that could be worked on. Comfort level, I gave a four, um, appears to be comfortable with the audience. Interest, um, engages audience, engages audience with interesting and well-constructed content, I gave a four. Unintentional movement, um, was limited and rarely noticeable, I gave that a five. And then purposeful movement, the speech is strengthened by powerful, I'm sorry, purposeful choices of movement, and I gave that a five as well. Thank you. I will pass it back to the general evaluator. Thank you. Thank you, um, Brittany, for this um, uh, great evaluation. I'm sure we all learn from each other and win um, in our next speeches. All right. So our second evaluator is Mr. Akin Oni, and he is going to evaluate Elias speech uh, floor plane management. Please help me welcome Akin. Akin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Madam General Evaluator. Elias, first off, congratulations for delivering that speech tonight on floor plane management. Number two, thank you for giving us the gift of that speech because it's a speech that many of us whether we want to win in life or we just want to learn, or whether we want to assimilate or not, it's, there's something for everyone in that speech. And thank you also for giving me the privilege of being your evaluator tonight, because if you hadn't uh, come forward to deliver a speech, I wouldn't have had the privilege of evaluating it. So thank you so very much. I will be using the three, two, one methodology tonight, Elias. Three things that I like, two things that you probably could consider working on, and one standout for me. In terms of three things that I like, you started the speech after you figure out everything about the uh, sharing and not sharing. You said, good evening. Today, I want to speak about flood plane management. That was your first sentence. What that did for me was it helped me reconfirm that, yes, what you wrote down that you are going to speak on, that's what you are going to be speaking on. And then you caught my attention right there. Of course, I will have said tonight rather than today, just to bring everybody to the present, I will be speaking about. Number two, you gave us some statistics. And I'm not going to dwell on all the statistics, but I will talk about one. You said in 1980, 1988, there were about 400 deaths and about $4 billion in damage. What that did for me was it helped me to tune in to you because you were talking about specific. You are not just talking about something that you made up. Number three, things that I like. You actually shared your personal experience. Say, I've had experience with three of these flood events. That was very good because it helped me to understand that you are not just talking from your head. You are actually talking based on experience. Two things that you could consider working on. I would say that your contents were too much and tiny. And therefore, you have a very wordy slide. You need to work on those. And if you email me your, your slides in PowerPoint, I can turn it around for you to what I really would suggest that you consider if you are going to speak about things like that next. The second thing is certain images weren't as sharp as I would have loved. Images are very powerful when you present, and it's vitally important that you make them as sharp as you need them to be. One standard for me, you presented on a relatable topic something that we all have experienced and we can relate to. Again, thank you very much. I'm back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kim Oni. 
and I always like your methodology methodology to evaluate that give a really good structure um, to understand what is good, what is need to improve on, and what is stand out. Very good. Thank you. All right. So um, I guess the, the next question is to Madam Timer. Did both evaluator qualify? Yes, Madam Tos, uh, Madam Jane evaluator, both the evaluators qualify. All right. So I will call on everybody. Please send your votes for the best evaluator to Ms. Madam Toastmaster. And our first evaluator is Mrs. Brittany. And our second evaluator is Mr. Akin Oni. Thank you again for everybody who has participated um, for during our speech evaluations. I want to convey that I appreciate everybody that is participating. And I, Ms. Uh, General Evaluator, uh, if you could call the reports for, yep. your, for your team. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to uh, bring up my powerful evaluation team. So my first Evaluator will be our grammarian, Mr. Jacob. Jacob, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. I did not hear a lot of people use the word of the day. I will say though, Melissa, I like the way that you slid in there last minute with convey. I was like, all right, I see you there. I see you. Um, everybody did a great job today on their presentations. I love the how those who reviewed the different presentations really went in depth in detail to actually to talk about what it is that they liked and not just, hey, I did a good job, keep it up, move on. I do greatly appreciate some of the constructive criticism and the, the feedback that actually allows myself and other speakers to really delve into what it is that they could work on. Uh, so you definitely conveyed a strong message there, and I greatly appreciate that one. Uh, in the future, I do encourage everybody to use the word of the day. It's always good to just think outside of the box and think on your toes. So with that being said, uh, Madam General Evaluator, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob, um, Grammarian, and the speaker. All right, so now I'm going to uh, our Miss Timer and also our counter. So do you want to give the outcome report and then time report after? Ms. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. So I'm going to start from the outcome. Uh, a lot of people, you are kind of well prepared and I did not hear a lot of clutch words or pause filler, but something I was able to catch, uh, Jacob, your speech was fluent. There was nothing in this speech, but after that, when you were giving you your giving your report, at that time I caught some of the R's, and okay. then uh, I did not hear anything from Brittany. Brittany, but for Rohini, I could catch a couple of R's and a couple of um and and, and Jessica, the same thing with you. So I hear some R's, um and and from you. From the rest of you, I was not, I could not catch any of the, of the, uh, of the fillers, the, 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 the crutch, crutches or the pause fillers. So I was not able to do that. Now, coming back to the time, to the timer report, uh, I'm going to tell you, Jacob, you used in your speech seven minutes and 26 seconds. And Ilyas, in your speech, you used six minutes and 55 seconds. Brittany, for your uh, for, for your table topic speech, you used one minute twenty six seconds. Rohini, one minute twenty nine seconds. Akin, two minutes and three seconds. Jessica, one minute fifty two seconds. Melissa, one minute twenty six seconds. And for the evaluators, Brittany, 
you use two minutes and seven seconds. And again, you use three minutes and 19 seconds. That was my detailed report of timer. So back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Hey, thank you. All right. Um, so the next item in our agenda will be the, the, the GE report. So I will give the report uh, now. Uh, for I will use the PI, so prepare speech, impromptu speech evaluation, and then the overall of the meeting. So for the prepare speech, uh, we have two speakers, and um, Jacob and um, Elias both on the same path and the same um, project. And uh, like the speech evaluator says, uh, job well done. Uh, Jacob, um, I really enjoy your speech, your presentation, and your, uh, exp how to say, the, um, uh, the way you present it is very clear and uh, very interesting. So I also learned a lot from you. That's really good. Enjoy your speech. And then for Elias, I also your topic is very interesting. We all had those experience, those three big major um, especially Harvey, the storms. So that's really good to know a lot of useful information and everybody is very interested. I see everybody is looking at you uh, speech, very focused. So that's really good. Um, the only one thing I want to point out is your speech and your past seems a little bit not matching. Yeah, because you choose from vocal variety to uh, body language or something, but it doesn't, but your presentation is more about technical part or about the flood zone. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if maybe you picked the wrong project or something, but uh, just want to bring that uh, to attention. Um, if you choose to be um, more technical, but maybe choose something like presentation or something, I don't know, like in your levels that is more fitful for the, the past. That's just one suggestion. And then for the <clears throat> table topic speech, we have five uh, good topics that are really, really connected with our theme of the day, win and learn. And thank you for Abby to put all those together. And we have five wonderful answers. Um, so I really enjoy all those questions and uh, the answers. Uh, so that's really good prepared uh, topics. And then the evaluation, uh, Brittany, thank you for jumping in. <laughs> um, we missing one gender, uh, one speech evaluator and I ask a question and then you're willing to jump in and do a, a wonderful uh, evaluation. Thank you for doing that. Um, and also uh, Akin is our experienced uh, Toastmaster. So he always do everything so perfectly. So really enjoy your evaluation. And then um, the next topic is um, about how well the whole meeting do. I think we did pretty good because we did start in time. And like our Toastmaster said, most of the roles are filled up. Uh, in the agenda, we're just missing one row and we fill that up before our meeting. So that part is really good and we need to keep doing that. Uh, fill up, uh, sign up in the agenda and when you can and then uh, please do it before the meeting. And um, our Toastmaster really did a good job with organizing and running this meeting. I know she's the Toastmaster plus the president. Yeah, let's give her a big hand. Thank you for doing that. And uh, our president is not here. And she took the both row and plus the, the, the yeah, how to say, the ballot, ballot counter row. So it's not easy. I know, like, especially me, I have the same problem. If I got pointed to doing that, I try to find, make sure everybody can share the screen. That would be a big task for me too. And uh, again, thank you for Brittany to jump in and help us and the team too, to help us uh, through those difficulties. So thank you for doing that. 
And then um, our guest, I guess um, Brittany did an introduction and uh, I'm not sure if Ron Rohini did that. Maybe you did it before uh, the meeting started. Okay, I understand. So I guess at the end, uh, both of you need to give us some feedbacks. How do you feel about this meeting? And then uh, we have a good theme and a really good table topic. And our speaker and evaluators, they all perform really well. And thank you for all the evaluator, give them um, the gift by the evaluation. And um, I guess that's a really good thing that we keep having this and especially the first meeting in 2024 and uh, win and uh, learn. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Ms. General Evaluator. Appreciate the <clears throat> evaluation of our meeting today. I feel that, you know, I concur in the fact that our, we did have a successful meeting today. So before I turn it over back to the presidents for today, I want to go ahead and announce our, you know, I received all the ballot counts and I want to announce the winners for today. So our winner for our, our first speech or our, for our prepared speeches, our winner for today, drum roll, is Jacob. Jacob is our winner for today. Congratulations, Jacob on your prepared speech. Thank you again for conveying your thoughts, um, but not just to Jacob, but also to Leah's conveying your thoughts. We appreciate that. And for our table topics, our table topics, our winner for today is our experienced Mr. Akeem Oni. He is the winner of our table topics for today. Thank you, Akeem. Thank you for everybody for participating again. And lastly, but not least, uh, for the third portion of our of our meeting today, are our evaluations. We did have a winner for that, and again, our winner for today for our speech evaluator speech evaluator is Mr. Akeem Oni. Thank you, Mr. Akeem, and thank you again to everyone. So, one last. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Akeen and to, to be, he is fully in the role of my Toastmaster Y. So the floor is yours, Mr. Akeen. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Toastmaster and our uh, uh, presiding officer tonight. It's actually very encouraging, very inspiring to see how you coordinated this meeting thus far. That was very encouraging to me and it's a significant growth in your journey. If you haven't been giving yourself a pat on the back, please, when you are done tonight, do that. Just do it for my sake, or maybe do it for Jenny, uh, Jessica's sake, so that way she can keep smiling. Uh, on a serious note, there are two things I'd like to share with you all tonight. One is, what is my Toastmasters why? Number one, the reason I joined Toastmasters was somebody thought I would be able to help people to grow, but I have actually learned a lot more. And I wasn't surprised when distinguished Toastmaster Abby put me on the spot to say, well, this question is for you. I learn and learn and learn every day. You all know me. I listen to a lot of messages, even some of our past, uh, past meetings, if there's one speech that I remember resonated with me, I'll go back, if it was recorded, to play it again and pick up a few things. So I learned a lot by being a Toastmaster, and that's one of the reasons I'm still here. Number two, uh, it has afforded me excellent and very cheap networking. We all know that networking is relationship because without uh, good networking, without relationship, we, you really don't have good networking. I've been able to build the right relationship with a number of people within this club and outside this club. You all know that I function at different levels within Toastmasters. And I'm very grateful to each and every one of you for how you have accepted me despite my 
South Texas accent. You have accepted me, you listen to me, you hear me all the time, you like my South Texas accent, I, I really appreciate it. And I really would encourage you. I said it in December last year, and I'm gonna remind you all, if you are gonna be successful this year, and this is my personal story, KFC is your best bet. Remember, K is knowledge. Many a times you'll be, you will be told that knowledge is power, but no, that is a lie. It is effective application of knowledge that is power. Toastmasters has a lot of resources that you can leverage as, as members. Access them, use them. Don't just use them during club meetings. Make every meeting, every moment, a Toastmasters moment, at work, on the road, at church, in the community, wherever you go. Make it a thing that you do. Somebody told me very early when I joined the Toastmasters that all I should do is just make every moment Toastmasters moment. That's one. Number two, F. If you're going to achieve your goals this year, particularly within Toastmasters, you need to be laser focused. And like I said in December, anyone that is laser focused, that is built on planning and discipline. You plan and you execute that plan with discipline. Very important. And the last but not the least is C, which is commitment. But commitment, as you all know me, is commit, my commitment has gone beyond the regular commitment. It's unconditional commitment. I had a thousand and one other things I could be doing tonight, but I chose to be here. It was a choice. Unconditional commitment. And the, another parallel phrase that I use for that is ruthless dedication. Let me tell you, fellow Toastmasters, I don't know what your goals are this year. This is my personal story. If for, I don't want you to have 10 goals. Have two to three goals, max. And for each goal, understand what you know. Know what you don't know. And try and identify the gap. And do whatever you can to bridge that gap. Number two, plan. for each, How are you going to achieve it? And then execute that plan. And then number three, be ruthlessly dedicated to achieving that goal. Be unconditionally commitment, committed to achieving it. This is my personal story. This is why I'm here. If you could do those three things on a per goal basis, you will win. You will be successful. You will learn a lot. That is my why tonight. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Mr. King. Thank you. appreciate that for conveying that, that message for us to, to win or learn and using the KFC method. As, as our meeting ends, I would like to get feedback from our guest, Ms. Rohini, if you, if you would give us a little bit of feedback of what you thought of our meeting um, and did you, did you learn, or did you win or learn? Surely, thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Uh, surely, I win, I won, and I learn also. Um, there were some of, I mean, all of them were great speeches, and uh, Jacob, uh, your speech was really great. Uh, I learned many things from your speech. Uh, Elias, your speech was very wow. informative. And uh, again, uh, Mr. Akin, uh, it is really great to uh, learn from you life lessons. And um, it is it is really great to hear from you. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not a speaker, so I'm, I'm trying to learn. That's why I'm here. So I feel this is a great opportunity for me to learn from you all because you are the best. That's what I feel. And thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Ms. Rahina, for you your feedback. Much. And Ms. Brittany, our second guest for tonight, if we could get your feedback as well. Um, any moments of winning and learning for you? Thank you. First, I'd like to uh, mention to Rohini, you are a speaker. You're just honing your skills at this point. So I just wanted to 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 attest to that. We're all learning and, and, and improving. Um, I would say that I, I believe I both uh, executed a successful win and I learned a lot today. 
First off, I would like to say to Mr. Akeem, um, I am very happy and grateful to be a uh, guest today in this Toastmasters group. Um, I do believe that true leaders inspire and each speech that you gave throughout the night was really inspiring. There were some nuggets that I was able to take from um, each moment that you spoke. To the rest of the team, I think that the meeting went through effortlessly. I'm happy to have been challenged today. I was looking to come and just kind of shadow the team, but I think it's always great when you can challenge yourself to do things that you're not prepared to do. And so I wanna say thank you for challenging me. To Jacob, um, as I mentioned in, in my evaluation, I thought your speech was, was really great. It helped me to think about the way that I speak in my tone and my volume and pacing myself through those speeches and also finding ways to connect as I'm presenting rather than just giving content that people are ingesting. Um, to Elias, I believe that we all can relate to flooding and I'm so grateful to have learned a lesson and kind of how to dig a little bit deeper in that research. And to the rest of the group, I thank you for welcoming me today. And overall, I think this was a really successful meeting. Thank you, Brittany, for, for your feedback. We really appreciate it. It gives our club an opportunity to, to, to learn as well. And we want to be, you know, we want our, our guests to, to engage and feel, you know, make you feel welcomed. And we definitely encourage you to, to join our club, join Toastmasters and our club specifically. You are, you can, you know, join multiple clubs, but uh, we are here to help. We are here to help you grow. We are here for both of you to, um, for anybody else who wants to join, um, encourage other guests, uh, a guest to, to come and experience what we have to offer. So I am now turning it over to our president for tonight, which is again, me. <laughs> um, thank you everybody for being here as your, as your uh, president for tonight. I want to give a shout out to, again, I wanna give us a shout out moment to Ms. Brittany for again, taking on the role, for participating, stepping up, you know, not, not shying away from it. You know, that's that's what it takes. It takes for us to be present. It takes for us to to engage and 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 even if it's even if it might be nerve wracking, I call it in a sense. To, um, for me, you know, being in in the, in a role as president, toastmaster, and ballot counter is definitely something new for me, and being able to to do that. But um, again, I for for tonight, our shout out moment goes to Miss Brittany. Now, one thing that I do want to discuss during our meeting is that we have been discussing doing a hybrid meeting and we have come to, um, uh, we have made a decision that the hybrid meeting is, go our first hybrid meeting is gonna take place on the, on the first meeting of the month of February, which is actually February 14th. And our hybrid meeting is, plan we're planning to have that where Jacob works. Jacob, is, will you take a moment to tell us um, where that is? And we will follow up with an email on the location as, as well. Yes. So uh, I am actually still in the process. So yes, we, we have gotten approval from leadership here where I work. Um, so we will be doing it I uh, here at the building. We are located off of uh, I-10 I and Kings. No, excuse me. Hold on. I-10 and um, Jerry Ashford, uh, and we will definitely be sending out uh, address uh, as well as how to get into the building. We have plenty of parking. We have a parking garage behind that is directly connected to the building. So we'll be sending further information out um, in the coming coming weeks that will just give an address, will give um, just basic information that's needed. So we'll be looking forward to that one and I hope uh, as many people can join as possible. Thank you, Jacob, for that for that little impromptu announcement there that we, we needed your help with. And then lastly, of course, I remind people in regards to the speech contest that is coming up. Our speech contest we are is going to be on again as well, February the 14th. Um, for those that are participating, well, Tosin's not here. I don't know what our participants are in here tonight, but we have that. We will need help with everyone else filling in roles. Uh, we have to, we need at least three to five judges, and we have a couple of other roles that uh, we're going to need we need uh, help with. So, 
uh, we'll look forward to, to doing that. So thank you. And I want to thank our sponsor, PMI, PMI Houston. Um, Akeem, did you have a question, comment? No, thank you. Go ahead. That's what I was going to remind oh. you. Yeah, yes, go, yes. We are recording this and it's very important. They are our sponsor. We need to always recognize them. So go ahead. You're on the right track. Yes, yes. So definitely want to thank our sponsors, PMI Houston, for making it possible for us to, to have um just for sponsoring for sponsoring our, our club to Southwest Project Management. And again, thank you. We are uh, we're running on time. We're four minutes early. So I will give everybody back four minutes of their time. Thank you again and have a great rest of the um, rest of your day and the rest of the week. And we'll see everybody in two weeks. Thank you very much, Melissa. That was fantastic. You, you should you should actually watch this when it's released. You see how, how great you did. Okay. Well done. I'm I'm very encouraged. Jessica, edit me out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks we everyone. Are, thank you. Brittany. So we'll see you again, you. Brittany, at some point. Yeah. In two, maybe two weeks. See you yeah. two weeks. All right. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.